Hi there, this is Nicola and welcome to this week's video. It's a case study about a zookeeper helping her great uncle publish his autobiography. And I have a freebie for you today, so watch to the end. I talk about the Your Family Story system so you can do something similar. Now, if this is the first time you've come across this channel, welcome. It's where we learn to write life stories for family and friends so that memories will live on. I'd love for you to subscribe and like this video. Now, over the years on this channel and on my website, I've done a number of case studies, real world examples about people writing life stories. And in today's video, it's all about Sarah Blake, who is an English zookeeper, helping her great uncle Headley write his autobiography. Now, it's a multi-generational case study. It's really great. And the kicker is that Sarah has started writing her own memoir. So how good is that? So let's jump in, tell you a little bit about the project. Now, Headley started out writing his life story and he ended up recording the ending, a lot of the final chapters on a dictaphone, using a dictaphone. And the main, the main details that he really goes into, um, quite a lot of examples, is when he was in World War II as a uh, RAF and also working in peacetime as a farmer. Now, Sarah says that her great uncle really wanted to do this project. He wanted to have his memories to share and to be enjoyed by other members of the family. And also, as he was getting older and his health was deteriorating, he, the process just brought him so much happiness. Now, who was involved in this project? Originally, we had Headley and his wife, and they were really happy for Sarah and her mum to kind of step in there uh, at the end of the process. So once all the stories were recorded in shape, one shape or form, and they worked together to, to polish it up and get it published for family and friends in a written form. Now, uh, Sarah's mum loved doing this. She, she, Sarah says her mum got a lot out of it because she could see all the characteristics and, and family traits in herself and Headley, and she sort of made those connections. So she really enjoyed it. Sarah um, was a teen at the time, so she says, oh, you know, it felt like it took forever. But in hindsight, she says there's been some really good positive things that came out of the process and they learnt a lot. Now, we'll go into those. She said there was one, there was some challenges though. There was the fact that Headley had the sloping handwriting, which her and her mum transcribed um, into, into digital format. And also that Headley had a really strong English, East Anglican accent. So that meant it was, you know, you sort of had to stop pause on the dictaphone or the recording of the dictaphone to put it in, you know, type it all up. So she said that was, that was quite hard. She was quite honest there. But she says there were some really great things to come out of the, pro the process. Namely that, you know, she learnt so much about Headley, about him and his life. And, you know, just to share in that joy that the whole process brought him was amazing. She did mention that there were some favourite parts of his autobiography. Now, namely, that <laughs> no, not much health and safety back there in the day in England, but when he was on the farm, they, he would light a fire to defrost the fuel in wintertime to run the tractor. She said that was quite an eye-opener for her. Also that um, it detailed his care for animals, which is really applicable, or she can relate to that in her job today as a zookeeper. And I think the most, the top part of this whole story is that Sarah herself is now writing her own memoir based around animals, where her and her partner quit their, quit their jobs and traveled around the world for 15 months guided by animals. So she's in the middle of doing that and I think that is just fantastic. So there's three generations working on a life story and look, we've, there's another one on the way by the sound of it from Sarah. So 
just terrific. So I'm just going to recap. We've talked about what the project was about, who was involved and the lessons that have come out of it. I hope it really just this case study inspires and motivates and helps you to start, write and finish your own life story or a family story. Now this video goes into much more depth. I've got an article about it on my website. The link to that article is down below, foreveryoungautobiographies.com. And also while you're down there, leave a comment. What is a memory your, a relative of yours has told you that's really stuck in your head? It would be great for you to share it. Now at the top of this video, I talked about the Your Family Stories system, which is a whole system I've created for people to interview like Sarah, or like Sarah and her family, to compile their own, a loved one's life story. So in this system, I go from the very beginning about how to approach a loved one, how about doing this, how to set a time for an interview or an interviews, what questions to ask, uh, how to conduct the interviews, and then compiling, like transcribing it, and putting it into a digital format, polishing it up and publishing it. Now, it sounds like a lot, but I do hold your hand through the whole process. I've done this with my own grandmother and I've done it countless times as a print journalist. So, some lots of good tips in there for you. But today I've got the first three sections for you for free so you can have a look at it and see if it's for you or not. And I've left the link for that down below as well. If you've made it this far in the video, please give it a thumbs up and um, let me know. Give me a thumbs up if it's inspired you to get writing or recording family stories. Um, also, it'd be great for you to subscribe. It'd be really terrific. Hit that icon up there. Uh, to let to, so it will let you know when I've got a new video out. So I've got videos out each week. So until then, thanks for watching and happy writing.